Welcome to this presentation about designing your work for shipping. The images in this PowerPoint will illustrate unpacking a custom-made shipping box and some considerations an artist or maker needs to take into account when designing and making your work in this studio. Considering shipping early is essential if there will be heavy components along with lightweight or delicate elements. This example sculpture is titled Womanizer Kitchen Queen from 1982 by Harriet Estelle Berman. It was designed and fabricated to look like a real appliance. The problem is that the base is very heavy while the blender container and the crown are very lightweight and fragile. To avoid problems with shipping, I recommend planning for work to disassemble before shipping and reassemble at its destination or exhibition. This approach for shipping can also make the fabrication easier since you can work on each element separately. In the long run, it assures your work can travel across the state, across the United States, or around the world at low risk. In this case, the base was entirely made from brass and copper and weighs about five pounds. Even though the buttons look like plastic, they were made from brass rod that was painted. The crown, on the other hand, is made from thin sheet of pierced brass. It sits perched on the lid. The lid fits on top of the plastic blender container, which is very lightweight and almost impossible to replace. So, while the plastic container is not valuable, if it was damaged, the sculpture would be missing an essential element. If I shipped the entire sculpture as one unit, the crown and plastic container would definitely be bent or broken. This box functions for both storage and as the interior shipping box. My box is all closed with a simple brad and string. This avoids the common practice of using plastic tape to close boxes. The plastic tape would ruin my custom made shipping box. You can also see that I glue instructions for unpacking, assembly display, disassembly, and packing instructions on the outside of the box. Note that I also include my address and contact information in case the exterior shipping box is damaged. In this image, we're going to untie the brad and string closing method. As the box is opened, note that the person who is unpacking my work is wearing gloves. Fingerprints are very bad for exhibition work in all media. Note the orange felt flaps. Instructions are written on the flannel and the felt straps which cover the upholstery foam, custom fit for each sculpture. The orange felt flaps are glued onto the flannel so they cannot be lost or misplaced. The center foam lifts up to reveal the lid for Womanizer Kitchen Queen underneath. This center foam is attached with a white flannel hinge so that it cannot be lost or misplaced. The foam is thick and offers protection for the heavy lid and prevents movement. In this photo, which we saw before, you can see the lid below the crown. Lifting out the top foam is easier with the orange flannel straps. Now we see the next layer in the box. This holds the heavy base for the sculpture Womanizer Kitchen Queen. As I lift out the foam, you can see the instructions written on the flannel. Lifting out the foam layer, now we can see the base is revealed. The upholstery foam was cut to fit the base and covered with flannel to avoid any abrasion during shipping. Lift out the base from the foam. Now we can see the base. Note that the unpacker is still wearing gloves. I often include gloves in my shipping box 
to assure that my work is always handled with someone wearing gloves. I included this photo of the sculpture so you can see that all the elements, crown, lid, plastic container, and base, so far this box has held just the lid and base. To protect the crown and plastic base, they have their own box. Note that this box says box two of two, and it has its own identifying labels and artist contact information. Proper labeling of the interior shipping box also prevents it from being lost at the exhibition sponsor storage. Again, you'll notice that the small box uses the string and brad method to close the box without tape. The box may look a little worn. This is because this same box has been used for storage and shipping for 20 plus years. Considering how many shows this box has been shipped, opened, and repacked, it looks really great. Note that the gloves are always in the top of the box, just in case the installation staff weren't prepared with their own gloves. This box uses black flannel straps. Open the straps to reveal the instructions. Lifting the black flannel straps opens a foam insert for the crown. This prevents the crown from moving in the box during shipping. It is also one unit glued and hinged together so it cannot be lost during unpacking. Once the foam insert is removed, the crown lifts out easily. This crown was lacquered to prevent tarnish. It looks really great considering it has its original finish from 1982. The foam layer holding the crown will be lifted out. This reveals the plastic blender container underneath. Lift out the plastic blender container. There is another foam insert inside the plastic blender container you can see that there are instructions written on the flannel. A small plastic ballerina sits inside the foam. Inserted into the foam, it is suspended in the center of the plastic blender container during shipping. After 30 years, this small, fragile plastic ballerina is in great shape. Sure, it isn't worth a lot, but how would I possibly replace it? And then if I found a replacement, it probably wouldn't match the photo. It's a really valuable component to the complete sculpture. Lift out the foam easily to get ready for assembly. This is the last step in the unpacking. All the parts are ready to assemble. The ballerina legs just insert into the foam. Now that you can see all the parts, you can see how important it was to ship the sculpture as separate elements, protecting each during shipping. The base is ready for assembly. Delicately attach the ballerina. There's a small hole in the ballerina leg, so it slides onto a post of the music box in the base. The blender container fits on top and slightly twists to stay firmly in place. The lid fits on top of the plastic blender container easily. The crown lightly sits on the lid. Now you can see how the crown sits on the lid in this photo. And the sculpture Womanizer Kitchen Queen is ready for display. All work that goes out to an exhibition is accompanied by a condition report from the professional guidelines. This slide has both a tiny URL and the full URL to find it on the professional guidelines on my website, harriet estelle berminfo On the condition report, indicate scratches, any marks, or imperfections. This is to protect your work. 
It is especially important for a traveling exhibition where the work is unpacked, assembled, disassembled, and repacked on multiple occasions. If everyone checks the work against the condition report, it documents possible damage and where it occurred. Unfortunately, despite the best preparation and packing, accidents and damage happen to your work. In my 30 years plus of exhibition experience, I have had paint from the pedestal stick to my work, paint speckles on my work damaging my sculpture. And then of course there's always the occasional damage during the installation or exhibition. This is why the professional guidelines includes a document claims for damaged work. It includes step-by-step -step instructions for making a claim. I have used this document on several occasions and made a successful claim on multiple occasions. Keep in mind, it takes several hours to make a successful insurance claim. And if your packing is considered inadequate, your claim will be denied. This is even if you purchased insurance and the handling was obviously rough by the shipping carrier. This slide offers a tiny URL and the full link to the professional guidelines on my website. Ask Harriet also offers additional information and guidance about shipping. Look for additional slide share presentations about packing methods under the shipping category in the left column. The SNAG Professional Development Seminar in 2012 dedicated three hours to shipping as a topic. There are a total of seven slide share presentations. The Professional Development Seminar is sponsored by SNAG and MJSA. Presentations and handouts from the Professional Development Seminars can be found on the SNAG website. It can also be found on my website, harriet-estelle-berman.info. Look for the Professional Development Seminar link at the bottom of my pages. It isn't hard to find, just type in Professional Development Seminar in Google search to find either of these resources. Information about the sculpture Womanizer Kitchen Queen can be found on my website. I hope you have enjoyed this information and that your shipping will benefit from the voice of experience.